All right, I will call to order the June 1st regular monthly meeting of the Economic Development Commission at 637, 638. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Deborah, you have a comment about marketing that Wendy gave me a quick heads up, right? Yes. Okay, so we will add a, a copy of, I mean, a discussion of marketing. Um, we'll put that under F, under point D of new business. Marketing, would, uh, any other items, additions or deletions to the agenda? No, hearing none, citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments? We only have two non-EDC members here, I think, that I can see. No? Beth, oh, Beth. Yeah, you got three or four, actually. All right, anyone raising their hand? If you want to, you either have to turn your camera on and just wave or put your hand waving button up. We we do, for those of you that are new, we do take citizen comments throughout the meeting uh, on the topic that we're discussing at the time, if time permits, and it usually does. So um, you're welcome to raise your hand during our other discussions. Um, and Marion has, uh, has arrived. arrived, so we're all here. Mm -hmm. All right, um, the minutes of from the May 4th meeting are on the EDC website. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Joe has moved. Is there a second? Second. Larry is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. All right, our agenda today, we have three topics to discuss. Uh, the community merchant and visitor surveys. Um, a, a very brief review of the grant follow-up process, not so much the form, which we discussed at the last meeting, the questions, um, and a very quick update that I can provide on the select board discussion of the proposed change to the rental incentive program that we improved at our last meeting, the select board subsequently approved and then slightly modified their approval. It's not a, I don't think it's a big deal. It's a temporary, potentially. Anyway, I will explain that. Um, and then Deborah would like has added a discussion about um, book stock marketing uh, briefly. Is that right, Deborah? Um, it's not just book stock. It's it's just about our logo in general. But it was something that I saw through book stock that it brought yeah. it up. Okay. Yeah. It's not them specifically. It's for okay, all. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So that'll be that'll be five D. And then um, were any working group updates? And I know we have an update from the downtown revitalization group. Any, if there are any others that uh, people want to mention, uh, Patrick, you might want to just give us a quick update on any transitions that will happen as a result of your departure and so forth. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Um, discussion of the and approval. Oh, sorry. Before we um, go to to point five a, the new business. I just want to. I do this on every meeting. I want to just remind everybody. Our, we have. I know this is repetitive, but for the small number of people who are not on the EDC. Right. These are our five priorities, child care, increasing child care capacity, increasing workforce housing, marketing Woodstock, um, rejuvenating the physical downtown area and supporting events. And we have four programs, our major, well, five really, our, our major grant program, our community grant program. Uh, we no longer have grant writing support. That year of support has ended. Um, and I will do a follow-up, Deborah, with of that and as part of the follow-up process. Uh, it deserves a little bit of discussion, but that Part has ended. The storefront center program is still in place, and the loan fund is still being worked on slowly. I might so add. the grant writing that suspended permanently, or just until we know it, it ran out of funding, and we did not bring it forward yet. Oh, for re for refunding, and I don't think, in my opinion, we don't have to discuss this now. But well, we have not brought it forward for refunding, and I, I we so if it was refunded, would she come on board again? She might. I mean, she's. Yeah, Patrick, do you want to? Is there just a very quick update you want to give? For, well, I mean, it's basically, the the annual funding ended. Yeah, there's a gap, so it ended a month or so ago. She's yeah. off to other things. Yeah, we talk grant writing. Yeah, yeah. It, it basically uh, a lot of a lot of tire kicking, but not there wasn't really any grants that were uh, available for local businesses. Uh, you know, and we had a lot of people asking questions, and and just we never could get them to connect or people would ask the question and then not follow up. So there was a lot of questions, but not a lot of writing. What people, Patrick? Who are asking the questions? <clears throat> uh, local businesses and, and uh, uh, mo mostly local businesses, you know, particularly nonprofit stuff. Uh, the 
East End uh, trail and stuff. Uh, and there were, just weren't grants that fit into the buckets that they were looking for. I, I there's a there's a wrap up uh, uh, Excel file that talks that is literally every everything that happened that I can uh, forward uh, to John and he can put it up on the on the website. Well, and let me let me suggest that this is that this is a very relevant discussion, but not not for this moment. Uh, Deborah, I just suggest that we add this as part of the follow up program, even though it's ended because there's yeah, no that's other what program. I was thinking. Yeah, so well, there's some things from last year that should be followed up on, so that's yeah, perfect. And this is okay. one of them, so we can learn from that and then decide what to do. So, right. and then the loan fund, which is very slowly being worked on. For today's discussion, um, the first discussion about the survey, um, I just want to, seems to be, oh, okay, it's showing up on the screen. This is our simpler, this is the one that doesn't explode anyone's head work plan for the rest of this year on how we're thinking about the tourism marketing infrastructure issue, not just marketing, but includes marketing. The six buckets, the surveys of the local community, visitors and merchants, which is with the phase we're in now, and we're gonna talk about tonight. And then subsequent to that, or in parallel bit with that, we will start to think about whether there's infrastructure things, um, and then think about the impact on our marketing strategy and, our, uh, and other aspects of our marketing and so forth, and what infrastructure improvements we might wanna make, if, if, or other ways to address, the, address any issues that sort of come up. So that's kind of where we are. We're still in phase one. We're gonna talk about the first three blue boxes tonight. Um, and either tonight or over the next week or 10 days, if you all want more time, because we just sent you, the questions were just posted early this morning. So if, um, if that's not an, it's probably not enough time. So we probably will discuss it a bit tonight and then reserve a week or 10 days or so to give more feedback to the three members, Greta, uh, Marion and me, who are the drafters of the survey. So that's where we are. Um, so let's talk about the three surveys. And I think what we'd I'd like to do is let's just go one by one. And uh, let me just ask is, is in order just to, uh, to, we can decide to counteract this, but a couple of people have sort of indicated that, you know, this came out at the last minute, this is really important to get this right. And so could we have more time to do this? So unless people strongly object at the end of this discussion, because everyone except one or two people are in favor, then I'm gonna suggest that we set up a week. People can give the authors feedback. We'll have a very quick EDC meeting entirely by Zoom. We're not required actually to be in a physical space. We'll invite the public, but we don't have to be in a physical space. And my guess is in 20 or 25 minutes, we can finalize the surveys. If we send the surveys, if we approve the surveys a week or 10 days from now, or even two weeks from now, we're not gonna be off the schedule at all. Will be fine. So, <laughs> you just sort of turn it off, perhaps. Yeah, I'm trying to. Stop it. It's my brother-in-law. This chart, by the way, looks. It's come a long way. It's a great chart. Looking good, John. Good work, everyone. <laughs> head not exploding. Thank you, Todd. It's it's good to know that your head is in good shape. Ah. Uh, all right. So what's left of it? <laughs> Uh, so, um, sorry, you're going to see the sausage being made here to get it on. So let's start with, we can start with the, um, does anyone care which one we start with? Let's start with the visitor survey. And this is it basically in its entirety. Um, these will be obviously be electronic that, you know, there's no, there might be typos, things like that. We haven't cleaned these up, but basically seven questions, which, um, when did you last visit Woodstock? trying to get them to be as specific as possible, a holiday, a specific date, if they can't just tell us what year it was, how far. And then how did you react to each of these aspects of your visit on a scale of great, good, okay, not so good, bad. Lodging, food, we might wanna call that restaurants, indoor activities, outdoor activities, shopping, or other aspects of your visit. Just to try to get a general sense of the different areas. This does not go into the, what I'll call the next level of detail. If the food was bad, is that be, or if restaurants were bad, is that because you couldn't get a reservation or because you got food poisoning? So I call uh, that dining. Dining, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so 2B is dining. Yeah, thank you. That was the word I was looking for. I'm the author of this page. Um, three, how likely are you to recommend that a friend or colleague vi visit Woodstock? That's one of the kind of standard customer satisfaction type questions. 
and how would you rate your overall experience? Another way of getting at the same question. Um, and then the next question is really to try to figure out a trend since we will only have taken one survey. If someone has been to Woodstock more than once, we're gonna ask them, if yes, we'll ask them 5A, how does your most recent experience compare to your prior visits? It's better, it's the same, it's worse. Um, the, by the way, there may be some not sures. You know, we, we'll put, we'll clean up the, the questions to make sure that there's a not sure or an open-ended option or something. What was the best thing about your Woodstock visit? Open-ended response. And if there was one thing you could change about Woodstock to make it more appealing, what would it be? And so I think from this set of questions, it's all three of us as authors, I think focused on brevity as a very important criteria. So we can say to people, I think legitimately, any of these surveys, you can answer in less than three minutes. Mm -hmm. So whether that's posted on our website or in an email where we invite people to respond or on a QR code, whatever, we can basically say, look, it takes less than three minutes to fill it, finish the survey. Please help us. Hey, so John. let me just pause there and get some high level overview for kind of five minutes. Let's just get some feedback and see if it's Patrick. You know, so Patrick, go ahead. Uh, did, did you particularly choose good, great, okay, not so good, uh, and bad as opposed to rating it one to five? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine with rating it one to five. I, I don't have strong feelings about it. Uh, I, if, if okay, I was are, just curious whether there was a reason why you did no, it. Okay. No, I was being particularly creative. I was in a feeling that I was being creative without actually being creative. <laughs> why, why would you want to change it, Patrick? Uh People are used to surveys being like one to five, one to 10 kind of thing. And so yeah. uh, it might be just a quicker way to do it. Uh, they don't have to think it's kind of like ingrained in us. Yeah. Well, what would we um, should have? And should we say one is very positive and f uh, five is very positive? One is very negative and five is very positive. Watch Deborah's head. She's got it right. <laughs> yeah. One is very negative. Five is very positive. That's OK. And we'll do that on, on all of them. Yeah. And those words, very positive, very negative. One is very negative. That's fine. And five is very positive. Okay. All right. Any other other comments? Oh, I didn't put very in. I mean, I think we should be consistent. Across. Yeah, I agree. So we'll use, I'll, I'll make sure that, yeah, or you can make sure. Yeah. So Greta and Aaron. Will, I, the only other thing I would say is, is limit your open-ended uh, box to like 300 characters or or otherwise people, you know, could, could you could be reading a lot. I, I, I think we, I, I'd be happy to, yeah. I'd okay, be happy yeah. to have people writing an exercise. Yeah, we can. Cool. That's right then, then, then keep it, keep it open-ended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, some, we get some, yeah. So, all right, other, keep, let's keep going. Other thoughts? I have a thought. Yep, Todd, go ahead. I can't see, my, see my you. Only, my only thing is about the number seven. I mean, making movies and TV shows and being in literally hundreds of focus groups, you know, you're just going to hear so much nonsense and then we're going to take time to sort of dissect the nonsense and everything's going to have to be discussed. And so let's say a hundred people they survey, it's a hundred things to read of which 99 will be like, that's ridiculous, but it'll take us time and energy to do it. So I would just suggest we strike that. Well, well I, I, let, let me push back on that. First of all, I'm, I'm, I feel as the, you know, the person who read to author this, that I would take the first crack at reading this stuff and I'm comfortable synthesizing a hundred, you know, open-ended responses. Here's why I think it, it, it has the possibility of being valuable but without arguing that it will be, it, it very well could be exactly what you just said. But th this question implicitly has both priority and and it has importance as well as identify as well as what the issue is combined in it because they're not going to write a list of 19 things they're going to write the things that are most important and i think i think prioritizing which we don't do anywhere else mm -hmm. is, is going to be important and this gives them a chance to talk about the one most important thing we don't limit it to one well no sorry we say there's one thing if they follow the instructions, it'll tell us what the one most important thing is. So then how about we pick 15 things and make a drop down menu? Because someone's going to say more Christmas lights. Someone's going to say no Christmas lights. Someone's going to say trash cans. Someone's going to say more benches. Someone's going to say more painted signs on the streets. Like, I just don't think the data you get is going to be that that honed in. So maybe we can think of 10 or 15 things that make sense to us as people who live in the community that we can imagine 
yeah. and take that exercise and maybe go from there, perhaps? Uh, uh, all right, let's 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 come back. Deborah first and then Greta, and then Patrick. Deborah, Greta, Patrick. Wait, but so what do you think of that, though? <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, well I think let, that, let, let them say what they think, and then I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. I sure. presume you're going to respond to Todd or stay on the topic. So yeah, Greta, I'm going to stay on the topic, yes. Deborah, Greta, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, that's a specific exercise, and, and it is leading the the witness, if it's like, these are the things that we're asking you, which one of these would you say we should do? I mean, what's typically at the end of a survey, like we know is like any additional, any additional thoughts, any additional comments. And that way, if somebody really wants to complain about something or say something, they could say it there and it's open-ended as opposed to leaving it towards the negative or towards what do we need to change? It's just anything else you need, you want to say. Any, any additional feedback? Greta? Well, what I was going to say is that I really think that all three of the surveys are going to different community or different groups, but the common thread in all of these are bas is basically this question. And so it's like, we're going to take the responses from all three groups and kind of find that Venn diagram and figure out what are the, th the things that kind of fall, you know, for all three groups that everyone can kind of get behind. That's, I mean, it, it's it's going to be worded differently. You know, it's, it's it, for the merchant survey, we're calling it infrastructure and things like that. But I think that number seven, that's where um, the, the visitors are going to be able to say things like you need more parking or you need more daytime dining options, da, 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 oh, you know, that that's I, I think it's an important question to leave open ended. Patrick. Yeah, I, I don't think we should leave them in this particular one as well. I, and I think Greta, you brought up an interesting point. I think you'd have the question asked the same way on all three surveys okay because that way there's no question you know they're and they're, what's the one thing you want you know i think that would that'll help your venn diagram uh focus better patrick and then marion i'm oh, sorry joe and then Marion. So. um what, what i think is, is that it's the one question where you're allowing the participant to actually express how they feel about something rather than a quick yes or no that doesn't really illuminate how they really feel about what's going on. Yes, no, maybe, blah, blah. But this question gives them an opportunity to really express how they feel about that. That's how I think. Yeah, I think it's um, it's kind of presumptuous of, of us to say that we know. I mean, I think the value of the question is that there might be things that surprise us. That's right. And and like if we're going into this genuinely open-minded, we should ask an open and the question and be willing to be surprised. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the, in, in the minority here. I, for instance, if we get um, a lot of answers that says food, bad, uh, let's just say. Right. Um, and that's all we get. I mean, uh, somehow, uh, I agree that it would be great if they would then get more granular about it in uh, number seven, but somehow I would like to see that encouraged. For instance, is food back bad because there's lack of variety? Is food bad because no one could find a place to eat? Nothing was open or everything was overcrowded? I mean, there are all sorts of things that I don't think it's, we, we're not going to, I don't think the answer food bad is actionable by us. I don't think it gives us anything. I don't think you're going to get food bad. I think you're going to get lots of copy. I think that's why I was saying you might want to limit it because people will write a lot. You'll be surprised. Nothing wrong with that. Right. Well, no, not at all. All right. Well, there's two. There are two issues on the table. I want to, if I can, just come make yours the next question. I just want to close the loop on Todd's suggestion, which which the other people commented on. And Todd, I agree with the others. I think you're in the minority here. But let me also say that one of the a central part of your complaint, not the entire thing, was, you know, what if everyone answers something different? I think that gives us an extremely powerful insight. And it tell it clearly gives us an opportunity to do to to it drives how we act after we get that answer in exactly the same way that when we did the trash cans and so forth drove our answer. We basically there were third. If nobody can agree on what's important, then we will have to decide what's important, and we will have the authority and the to do that because nobody else can agree. So I I, I hope it, we get 
some common agreement from the people who respond to the survey on question seven. I hope 40 or 50 percent of them say one thing. But in the extreme, if we get 100 different answers from 100 different respondents, I know exactly what the EDC should do after that, which is to put our heads together and decide what we think is important and to ignore what the, what the visitors are saying because they're not giving us any guidance. And so, so I guess my view is – so I think, Todd, I think your point is understood and so forth, but I think there, most of the rest of us – except, Larry, you're commenting on a slightly different point. So I'm going to – so let's take Larry's question. But again, I want to leave time. I don't want to make these decisions tonight because I think I think we need. And again, if you all don't mind taking a week, thinking about it, doing some email exchanges with the authors on these kinds of topics, and Todd, we can continue the discussion in that forum if you want to. Is that all right? So let's. Yeah, I just, yeah no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Everyone's okay. are, you can go either way. I'm yeah. total, it's not like a hard stick in the thing. It's, it makes sense. Okay. I get it. All right. Uh, let's just talk about what one. Okay, go ahead. No, I was going to say Larry's raising a sep I think a second question, which he and I talked about a little bit earlier before the meeting. And you're using one example, but but which is that the answers to these questions are not going to tell us what to do. Like if if it doesn't matter if if we hear dining is bad, or we hear any of those things are bad, or even if even if um, the answer to question seven, if fifty percent of the people say um, the, the, the dining, you know, I really didn't like the dining. We, yeah. If they say parking sucks, I think we'll know a little bit what yeah. to do. Yeah. But if they say dining or outside activities or there weren't enough event, there wasn't enough to do, yeah. we won't yet yeah. know what to do. And so, right. And so the question is, I think the trade-off is, should we expand the survey and try to understand not just this number of questions, but you know, should, should we ask? We could ask on question two. You know, for the things that you rated as bad, could you explain further what was bad about them? Which is kind of what you're trying to get at. Um, we could actually, in number two, and 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 in the other surveys, we could say we could encourage them in, with some sort of language that we would ask that you uh, uh, expand on your answer in number seven. You know, well, that you drive driving them to encouraging them not to just say dining is bad, but to but, but, in number seven, be more specific. Well, the problem is, is that I, the, the reason not to do that is a number of people mentioned, and I agree that number seven isn't just limited to the five things mentioned in question two. No, but, but it, you don't have to say that. Well, but if we tell people in number two to use question seven to answer why they answer number two, they're limited to what they answer in number two. But just say in number seven, in addition to the questions that asked in two, do you have anything else you want to say? Well, another another way to look at that would be in question two. If they answer not so good and bad, have a have it because they answer that. I'm sure Todd's programming this. Uh, have them if they ask that that a, a box then comes up that says, "Please explain why." You know, that's, that, that's a that's a great idea. If it's sub three, yeah, can we get more info on it? And then seven's open ended. Yeah, that I gives agree. us two. That gives us extra data points to sort of. Get through the noise on if seven's a bit of a disaster, but maybe it won't be. And it does. That's a good idea. Well, but I also think my concern is that it expands because every single one of two A through E require. But it's if we only get the bads, then it, it only makes the survey much longer for people who think everything is bad, which is fine. Right. So okay. that's fine. Well, doesn't have to say that. I can say no. I just expand on your answer. No, 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 no. The point, no, no. But uh, th this suggest, what we really want them to expand on is is an answer of bad. Right. Right. And people who complain are more motivated to answer. Absolutely. And and yeah, Larry, from a technical sure. point of view, the survey will if it is is there's branching, we're gonna, if, which means that if it's, <laughs> it'll only ask the question, it, it will if you just say bad, it will just say why was it bad. Right. Question one should be how often do you use Yelp? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other other comments. Last last comment because we've kind of covered a couple topics. New topic on this survey, and then we'll go on to the next. New, yeah. New question about the um just the um. For discussion um outdoor activities indoor activities um do we mean like cultural activities by indoor or we do we mean dining? what do you think i, I I'm, I'm not sure what it means and I, so i was confused by it I, I thought it might be confusing i wrote outdoor activities and then i thought but i thought cultural activities might be yeah a good a better character a better than yeah. indoor. yeah i'm fine with that i think that's great 
So 2D is cultural. Sorry. Okay. I don't like to be, but I think, I think, I think number seven, again, I'll say it again, is important because yeah. that's the one spot where people can just narrow it and, you know, express exactly how they feel about their experiences. Rather than a yes or no answer. Yes. All right. So we're going to leave question seven. Yeah. Great. All right. In question two, we're going to say that if thinking like a lawyer, if bad, you why? I would right. do not so good and bad. I would do both of those. Have them. Right. Uh, That's what I would do both. So if you basically do a one or a two. Right. Exactly. Not, if one or two, ask why. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's cool. Okay. All right. Uh, Given that we're going to have, no one has objected yet to having the extra time. We're going to go on to the next one. So let's let's go to um, Marion. Do you want to do yours? So that's yeah. the community survey. Sorry, I'm touching my head. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's. I can't fit this all on one page. Um, so start at the top, John, and we'll slide down. All right. Yeah. So, are, Marion, do you want to just all of your are all of your passwords in that P words tab? Can you click on that for us, John? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. No keywords. <laughs> definitely not password. I'm sure it's something else. Yeah, I'm sharing a little bit too much of my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. For, fortunately, this page isn't full screen, so you're missing the things out to the right of Yahoo. <laughs> right. I literally have tears in my eyes right now. All right, Marion, go ahead. Do you want to just take us through this one? Yeah, do you want me to just read them out loud? Or? Yeah, I think okay. that's... So I have, um, do you live in Woodstock, Vermont? I put Vermont there just in case. Uh, yes, I'm a full-time resident. Yes, I'm a part-time resident. Yes, I'm a seasonal resident. No, I'm just visiting. I realize it's for residents, but I think it might get in the wrong hands, so let's just do that. Um, the questions are, do you feel tourism impacts the overall sense of community in our town? Yes, no, or I'm not sure. And there's a condition. I don't want us to have questions because I have a question on the first one. All right, why don't you go through all of them? Yeah, why don't I go Let's through go through all of them and then Patrick, you're first in line. Too. So okay. I have yes, no, I'm not sure. And then if yes, in other words, if it impacts your sense of community rate, that impact on a scale of one to five, positive, uh, five being positive, one being negative. Okay. Do you feel tourism impacts your personal enjoyment of town? Same, yes, no, I'm not sure. And then if yes, one to five. Do you volunteer in the community? Yes or no? And the conditional again, has tourism impacted your interest in volunteering? Um, and then have you experienced any difficulties or inconveniences accessing local facilities or services due to tourism? Yes, frequently, yes, occasionally. We can maybe make it a one to five, I don't know. No, there has been no issue, I'm not sure. Do you feel the town government and law enforcement are able to manage the impact of tourism here? Yes, no, I'm not sure. This is one that, um, yeah. Um, overall, do you believe the current level of tourism in our town strikes a good balance between economic benefits and preserving the community identity? Yes, no, I'm not sure. And then my open-ended question is, is there a specific impact of tourism, positive or negative, you feel we should know about? All right, um, uh, Patrick. Patrick. Okay. On the first question, I think there should be a, a choice in there for someone who lives in Barnard or Beachy or oh, yeah. uh, Bridgewater. You know, I don't live in, I, I live in the Woodstock area or some, I, yeah, good I, idea. Towns. I live in one of these towns. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing I would do is when you have these things where it's like, uh, if yes, that's a programming thing. Do the same yeah. way that we do. Exactly. On, on right. The It'll be conditional. If they answer yes, that'll come up. Yep. Uh, and then the only other thing is, I think we should have the question uh, that was on the other one, if there's one thing you could change. I think if that question's across all three surveys, it'll be very interesting to put those all together and do the three circles and see what ends up in the middle. I, you're keeping track of these. I am comments. taking okay, right. Yeah, Thank you. Okay, other comments, Deborah? Yeah, if can you scroll up to the front? Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm in the yeah. wrong place. Um, I love the idea of the last question being the same, but but just shift it slightly. If there's one thing you can change about tourism in our town, it would be, you know. Yes, so, right. We're not talking about change. Yeah, right. Yeah, so you make it relevant to each different one, but it's the same one. Um, this is great, um, Marion. Um, 
Do you feel tourism impacts the overall sense of community in our town? That's at the top. Second question. Um, you know, do you feel tourism impacts, are you saying negatively? Well, on our over, or, so like, the way the question is set up, if they say yes, it impacts it, an automatic next question comes up, is it positive or negative? Well, if you say no, there's no. Can I just suggest that Got because it. I think that, that when I first read that question, I think another way to get at exactly the same thing is make is simply what do you, how would you rate the impact of tourism? So I was trying to separate. Does it have an impact? Right. Is it good or bad? Well, but if you do one to five, we could the five could be it has no impact. But then if it has, I'm sorry. That's right. Three could be no impact. In other but words, it could have. It could have a five. Yeah. One could, is negative impact. Two is a, a strong negative impact. Two is a somewhat negative impact. Three, three is no, is no impact. Yep. Four is a somewhat positive. And then okay, you answer yeah. both questions. Yeah. I, I, I think the thing that uh, Marion's saying, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, and what I'm thinking here is it could be that it impacts our sense of community in a positive way at level five, or it impacts our community in a negative way at level five. Right. So they're so two answer, different. Well, so that would be. You're asking two questions, Deborah. Which yeah. I think Marion wasn't asking. No, I, I think it was. Well, yeah, so that's what we're trying to figure out how to make sure it's clean. So our, how in, there's a question of what is what direction is the impact yeah. and, and how intense is that? Is I think if yeah. you if you do it the way I just I suggested. Yeah, I think that works. we get in one question both of those. We don't get as much granularity. We only get four and five as opposed to right. Four and five is two levels of positivity. Yeah. One and two is two levels of negativity. No, that seems simpler. I. I I buy that. Right. I mean, I think we're, get, we're getting what Deborah is suggesting. Yeah. That's typically how it would be handled, too, is, is exactly like you said, John. A typical survey would have that middle one as yeah. doesn't bother me either way. Do you think that's confused? I mean, I guess the same people aren't doing oh. surveys, so we're not going to confuse them by having our one to five be a different. Right. Scenario. Right. They, correct. <laughs> hold, hold on one second. Ken Sturm has just said that the audio is very garbled. Ken, um, we're going to try. Marion, can you just take this? And oh. And Mary needs a microphone. Yeah, we're going to give her a microphone. Ken, if you can hear us, there's nothing we can do about it. We have a good audio system. If it's garbled, it's probably because our bandwidth is, it's either at your end or our bandwidth is um, is troubling. Is anyone else having a problem with the audio? Mary, talk a little bit. Hi. Do you yeah, really need to hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, so Ken, thank you for commenting. Hopefully that um, that has fixed the problem. All right, let's keep going. Other, um, other comments? Uh, Greta? Uh, so what we what we had discussed with the last one, I think um, Deb just, Deborah just made a comment about you know maybe the last uh, question on this one, or someone did. But I, I'm wondering if we should lead them a little bit more. If the question should be more specific about um, what piece of what investment should the town of Woodstock think about? What should we invest in to make? managing the impacts of tourism uh you know sorry more manageable <laughs> um so be, i feel like you know as we were saying when i was speaking to todd's comment um every it kind of having a common thread of the question it's it's kind of what we're getting at is where should the money be spent so i feel like in this in this particular one we could use a question that's kind of more directed at what should we be investing in to make this better for visitors and the locals or specifically locals in regards to visitors? Does that make sense? That's not the whole question. Yeah, I, I, it, no. well, I, I'm not sure it completely. Yeah, my concern with that is- um, Makes it, go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess my concerns are, one, it's sort of assuming that there's something that needs to be fixed, which we don't wanna assume. And then the other right. piece is, is it may, I mean, I'm assuming most, maybe I'm assuming most people are like me. They haven't thought, you know, hadn't thought a ton about it. And so I wanted to try to make it things that people think about in their day to day. Like, wow, there's too many people. I can't get to the restaurant, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's a bad, I mean, I don't think it's a bad question. I'm not sure how, Greta, I'm not sure how your comment is different than earlier. I, I, f I forget who it was. It might have you been mind you. scrolling all the way to the bottom? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. 
So I, I think somebody suggested that we have those two parallel questions at the bottom that were parallel yeah. to the other one. And if that's yeah. what you're suggesting, I think that makes sense. And just rewording them to say. If there was one thing you could change, just making sure it's not in the, in, yeah. the, in the visitor survey, it is by definition about tourism, Woodstock. but in the community survey, so someone suggested, maybe it's Deborah, if there was one thing you could change about Woodstock as it relates to tourism or something like that. Exactly. Well, make it specific. Is that what you, is that the point you're making, Greta, or, or is it something else? Yeah, I guess Um, in my mind, I, I was thinking that all three of these surveys would kind of, you know, in some way lead the the person filling it out to give a suggestion of what should be invested in um, as far as you know, it, and, and it doesn't necessarily need to be that that's, but that was my response to Todd's initial um, comment was just, I was thinking that, you know, there would kind of be all three groups would be recommending things that um, we, we could pay for. Yeah. We could be paying for exactly. And well, so it's kind of like, okay, I, I what, have... what can all three groups agree on? So one, one point I have, I mean, there, the, the question I asked which is a little different, is is there a specific impact of tourism, positive or negative, you feel we should know about? Because mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, the survey right now is like, does it impact this? Does it impact that? Yes or no? And I, I thought we genuinely would want to know, maybe there's something we haven't thought of that is an impact. Absolutely. And I think, yeah. Greta, I, I think that it, it, we can pay for anything. It's not just infrastructure. I mean, Larry, you right. made this point in our private discussions. Right. We might, you know, they, they, they might say, well, you know, it's uh, we want more uh, diversity in the people that, we're, that are in the town. Um, now, I mean, we could pay for that. We might decide that the, that the three biggest things that people are complaining about are things that are beyond our capability. So then we'll pay for the fourth thing. But I think, but I, I agree with Marion at least that, that I think this question, like the question that's on the screen, question seven is asking about what we should pay for. It's just a question of whether we would pay for it or not. We have to decide that. Right. You know, right. so I, I don't think, yeah, there's no limit to what. Well, I'd actually like to know, like, I, I thought the idea of having parallel questions of like, you know, what would you change makes sense. But now I'm thinking more like this is m my last open-ended question is actually a different question. Right. And I don't know if we want to ask all three or I, I'd love to hear what people think about that. I'd like to suggest, I agree with the suggestion that we should ask a version of questions, a very close version of question seven in each of the three surveys. But I what do you think that. about this question uh, there now? I, I think that's which is a that. different question i think it's a different question so do we ask both you could say is there something else about tourism that positive or negative you feel we should know about what, what? yeah i think that, uh, there's no reason to just not have another question like leave that get that information and then have the final question being is there a specific is, is there have the final question be a version of what's on the other form and still keep the question that Marion wrote because it's it's like it's different. Yes, because I'm I'm thinking like okay, part of this is there are people in our community who are frustrated, yeah. and they want an opportunity to tell us what those. I think that's the point that's valid. But doesn't it, it, does that? But doesn't point number doesn't doesn't seven do that? Yes, if you, no, you had your version of seven, how it's, would, a, it's I think seven is about how to fix it, and this is um, no, is there one happening to you? Is there one thing you could change? Isn't that how? Uh, to me, I I, I'm, maybe I'm getting in the weeds, but but the way I'm thinking about it is there's a like if if you ask me this question, and I would say like somebody peed on my lawn, right? And if you ask me that question, I would say there should be police in town. I I oh. fully agree with Marianne's point here, and I think there is a distinction personally. So which which one would answer uh, there should be police? Because I don't. What, want... which, what's the one thing you would change? I think there should be police. I'm just saying that's not really. My... Oh, you don't think that people would say? I think you should find a way to stop have people stop being on the lawn. No. No, I think they would just do existing sort of. I think they're. I think they're. I think oh, they're I should stop advertising, I or you should. Oh, I, I, would yeah. <laughs> I would answer. I would not know how to. It's just... Yeah. I think there's the people would be different. Yeah. I would never, I wouldn't have answered any of the, I would have answered the opposite way, but I wouldn't have known. Yeah, I would have answered the two anybody, questions the same. Anybody that goes anywhere on vacation, the last thing they want to think about is poor cops. Okay. <laughs> so can I just say that it's clear that. With, that was an example. I think we're all pointing towards the same general direction for the end of the survey. Right. Open-ended yeah. questions, trying to elicit information. Yes. But we yeah. haven't quite got the wording or the number of questions. Right. So and that, that's your John, list. I think I think that the unit I think that if there was a way that with Greta was saying and we touched on, I think at the last 
question, whatever it may be, was a uniform thing to make a solid data point from the three groups, like just definitively when we decide in the final verbiage, that that would be really fantastic. So there's there's yeah. really no ambiguity about it. That that would be right. my one wish in this thing. But I mean, it, it's all we're all splitting hairs here, really. Yeah. It's, it's a lot right. of great questions. Ask question seven, Marion. You, you'll consider over the yeah. next week as you get feedback whether or not to have whether this one is. And if you are going to have this question, I would just make sure that it's clear that it's yeah. what you're the two aspects you're trying. Yeah. To. Got it. All right, other comments about the uh, community survey? Jeff's got a question. Yes, uh, I do have a question. Um, oh, I don't see Jeff. Oh, sorry. There what, you go. go ahead, Jeff. Uh, I'm here. Sorry, you're not seeing me, but I'm here. Um, question number one about uh, residents, uh, Woodstock. I, I just have to disagree with Patrick on that one. This is the Woodstock Ec Economic Development Committee. And that's where it's funded from. And that's who we want to know about. It's also second point to that it's going to be much harder to do a full survey of surrounding towns as well as Woodstock. Um, so I would just keep it the way it is. Uh, it should be for Woodstock residents. But, but Jeff, I, agree, Jeff, I agree with you, but it may get handed to some people who are not residents or who used to live here. So we should just have it there just in case. It's 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 actually there so that we don't accidentally get people voting, so to speak, who aren't from Woodstock. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it should be just for people who are from Woodstock. Can, now. can we just add to what, what's up there, which is, yes, I'm full-time, yes, I'm part-time, yes, I'm seasonal, um, yes, I'm in the Woodstock area, you know. Oh, no, so, no, it's no, no, but I live in the Woodstock area. No, but I live in the Woodstock area, yeah, exactly. And Jeff, we can then decide what, if anything, to do with that. I, I, I tend to agree with you that we would be interesting to know what those people think. There might be some questions on which, which we would find relevant, but they still we, spend money in Woodstock. No, I was trying to think of how a lot of those people are coming into Woodstock. But yeah, we could <laughs> we can consider those to be visitors. We can we can consider them to be visitors as opposed to residents. Yeah. So I, Jeff, I, but I don't. Uh, well, yeah, I was just wondering how how is this survey getting issued? I mean, I I envisioned it going out to all uh, mailboxes for Woodstock, uh, for instance. Yeah. I mean, otherwise it's going to be extremely random. How are you going to really survey the residents of Woodstock? Well, we just go to the, the listserv. I think is, I mean, I, I don't read my mail ever. So if you sent something to me in the mail, that would be fine. But it's going to go into the to the Heartland Solid Waste Transfer Station. Okay, I could make the same point that not all people lo look at the listserv, because uh, which is amazing, but it's true. I agree completely. I agree completely. We how can also does, distribute how much does the list cost versus how much does the mail. But anyway, we're going to distribute it as best we can. We don't have a budget. We we could ask for a budget. I mean, we have administrative. Yeah, the stand the standard Vermont standard thing, the list are like the things we do with all the servers at a minimum. And if anyone has any better ideas, we can add to that for sure. Like, you know, but but yeah, we don't have, we're not gonna do a mailer. I don't think that's happening. Well, we could no. get a QR code made and have that. Yes. printed on some materials to pass out in the village yes. or something. Okay, thank well, you. Jeff, I do think that by adding the additional possible answer on question one, we will have the ability to limit the responses to this survey to only people who live in Woodstock, which I think was your point. And yeah, that was my point. Thank you, right. John. And we will have that, we will have that ability. So, Lauren, Joe is just suggesting that you have a point of view about any of this? What do you yeah. ideas about this? What do you think? You sitting there getting uh, this all in. What, what's going through your head right now? Huh? Pulling it all in right now. Okay. Right. Well, you got something? To... Just jump up. Feel free to jump. All right, right. Uh, Marion. Uh, uh, do you want? I mean, again, we will have a phase of more feedback. Yeah. Is there uh, at this high level that we're talking about other other kind of new points about this survey? Uh, uh, Beth, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering um, for the top if it would be worth having um, no, but I work in Woodstock because that might have an in. I mean, they might have a valid, great idea. valid idea or uh, idea. input into this. Good idea. We'll add. Uh, yeah. Mary yeah. Grace. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay, all right, let's go to the third one, which is the merchant survey. Uh, no, sorry. Oh, there we go. Now we got the holders up. Oh, 
Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Am I sharing? Oh. All right, Greta, you want to take us through and then we'll do questions? Sure. So at the top, location and type of business uh, to be filled in. And then considering the experience of visitors to Woodstock over the past few years, would you assume these individuals leave feeling A, disappointed by certain parts of their experience and not wanting to return, B, disappointed by certain parts of their experience, but open to coming again, or C, very happy overall? Next one, sorry, they're not numbered. Um, in order to provide a positive experience for our visitors, what would you identify as the most important piece of infrastructure for the town of Woodstock to invest in? So basically this, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll have a quick aside. This is the one that is, you know, I guess if we're gonna align all three in some way, this is the one we would probably choose. When I met with um, some of the merchants and discussed this with them, they had, they had suggested that we get more specific and not keep it totally open-ended, but we can discuss that after. Um, moving on, how much year over year growth in revenue from tourism alone is necessary to sustain your, sustain your business then between zero and 25% or more? Do you believe that the EDC's marketing of Woodstock has increased your business? Yes, not sure, no. If you answered yes, by how much? Less than 10%, 10%, 25, more than 25? What percentage of the budget for marketing the town of Woodstock should be covered by the local merchants? And then the percentages. How do you anticipate your business in 2023 will compare to 2022? Less revenue, same revenue, higher. And then general comments regarding marketing strategies for the town of Woodstock. That's going to be a fun question. Yeah. Comments? I want to be the one reading that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Larry. Yeah. Um, so, um, one and two don't quite track to me in the sense that the uh, there might there might well be other non infrastructure issues um, that the 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 merchants want to to mention, um, and it seems to me that uh, that it's not it's not tracking. The answer, if the answer is that if they leave disappointed, is not necessarily going to be cured by an infrastructure investment. And uh, it seems like there should be something that uh, that uh, encourages the business owners to suggest what that would be. So that no, that's a great point. I think that um, when we, like I said, the the merchants had said to get specific with. Um, a multiple choice, but I do think that in the interest of keeping it similar to the other two surveys, we should just leave it open-ended. And maybe if you think, take out the word infrastructure, just keep it the same as far as what should be invested in, or I don't know what. what you're, make, you're, you're saying, you're suggesting uh, making the second question the version, some version of question seven for merchants. Correct. Yeah. It doesn't need to, it doesn't need to fall where it is in the survey. It could be moved down um, and it could be open-ended. Originally it was open-ended. It was kind of, it read, you know, saying, what do you think should be invested in? So I but think that's with, her question. Go ahead, yeah. And in, in reference to the visitors, what would make it nice. your concern for question two, but yeah. not, not yet for question one. But, well, it, actually the combination with one and two sort of, does that get to your concern? Or? Well, I mean, you know, I as I as I said to you, I'd like to have more details to well, specifically you know, give give them encouragement to say what. Well, fine. We they, could, if they're disappointed, well, we could do the same thing as if they basically answer A or B. We could just say, "What's the main reason why?" Yeah, that would be fine. Sure. Do we want to do a similar like a one to five instead of disappointed by certain right. parts in it? You know, do a how would you, yeah. So we could either do with yeah. three as not and, you know, yeah, no, positive and negative. Well, the same. So Greta, would you be okay? Yeah. Would you okay with a one to five scale? Very Absolutely. negative to very positive. All right. Mm -hmm. So for the first question. I think, I think, I think that we, we got to those three options because uh, you had a point, uh, John, about 
you know, a lot of people will have negative things to say, but they still want to go back. Right. So you're, yeah, you're asking, yeah, you're we're talking about return business kind of. Yeah. Business. We're talking about two, there are two questions that emerge together here. And, and um, one of them is how do you think people feel? And the other is, will they return? Right. Right. So we uh, could, we could separate those and just do how is your overall experience one to five and then just have it be a yes, no. Would you come back? Do you think that, 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 that well, we can't, because we're asking the merchants about all the people. So we have to think, you you know, or what percent of oh, people. Oh, right. Think, it's, sorry. Yeah. So maybe it's what percent of people do you think will return? Right, right. But yeah. I, it, it, or it, or uh, what, you know, what's the likelihood that they'll return to one to five scale? Right. Very it, likely. Greta, was there a strong, I just have a question. Was there a strong, so Greta worked with the merchants, with a, a few of the merchants, a committee that Jeff and Beth have sort of worked I think all with. three that I spoke with are here tonight, actually. Beth, oh, okay. Jeff, and Lauren. Okay. So, um, okay, well, so well, if, John, any, if you have any comments, that's fine. And then go ahead, Jeff, and then Deborah. Yeah, in question one, I mean, I would have to answer uh, A and B uh, because some people wouldn't want to come back again and others would. Uh, it, it, it's a tremendous number for both A and B. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, very happy overall. I mean, some are very happy. I have to answer A, B, and C, unless, you know, and then if you wanted explanations, sure, but there's no way to not answer all three of those if you want to be realistic about what we experience as merchants. Well, let me ask you, can I ask a, perhaps a tough question of the three people that were the, not you, Greta, but the others that worked on this, or, or really the merchants, in fact, since we're asking people whether or not they, they had a good experience, does it shouldn't we rely on what they say rather than what you think they would say? Well, if you're relying on what they say, you have to answer all three. No, no, but we're not asking we're on, on for them. We're asking each person We're you know, would you would did you have a good experience? In other words, if we get if we're lucky and we get 250 visitors to answer the question, did you have a good, you know, the question we were going to ask them, did you have a, a good, you know, let's put it up. You know, uh, how likely would you recommend it? How would you rate or how would you rate your overall experience one to five? then we know that 60% of them rated it a one and 30% rated it a two and 10% rated it a five. <laughs> I guess my question is, should, do we need to ask the, I, I don't want to, if you guys think we should ask the merchants that I, I'm okay with it, it's fine. But should we really be asking the merchants the first question, which is basically, what do you think the people feel? I mean, I, it, merchants do have a, a lot more insight into what people feel than I do. All the time. Right. So then, so that's let's ask them. They speak with us all the time. We sit down and have a cup of coffee with them, and you get all the information you need right from them. Well, then let's all the time. Well, then let's ask the question in a, in a form that we can use to compare it to the visitor survey. Right. That's interesting. Good. Right. So the merchants yeah. think that is that okay, Jeff and or uh, or Joe? You're you know the the merchant the visitor survey is basically how likely are you recommend? Well, how would you rate your overall experience one to five? So what if how we think what what if we just ask how do you think prisoners would rate their experience one five yeah, yeah what would the three questions you get more from my experience what is there to do in this town where should I go for dinner um what's the story with the puck <laughs> and those, those essentially you know those are pretty much you know. Is there more shopping? How do I get to a shopping spot? That's a, down the road, turn right. I mean, it's just, and, and inevitably, the first response is, have you been to the museum yet? Do you like to hike? Can you up Mount Tom? I mean, it's it's quite, really quite that simple. It's, it's I, uh, I will not, say this, not that, more complicated than that. I think that Joe's going to get different questions than I get as a logic property. Yeah. They don't ask you where to eat, Patrick. They ask me where to eat, then they tell me where's the hiking, yeah. uh, what, are the, what are the best things to see, where are the covered bridges. I yeah. mean, I, I get all kinds of questions. I, I probably easily a dozen the same questions all the time. De Deborah, sorry, Deborah, you've had your hand up for a long time. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can remember. <laughs> Seriously. Um, uh, da, 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 da. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I had two two thoughts of things that I was wondering if if we wanted to find out more information about, um, which is oh shit, I just lost. Oh, you me. know what, oh, Deborah, let, let, let's. It, it sounds like you might want to change the subject. So, I just no, want to, no. I want to, is it on question? Uh, yeah, one? it's not about the first. It's not about the okay. first question. Let's just resolve that, and we'll come right back to you. Yeah, I, I think people were nodding their heads when we said. We want the first question to be comparable to the visitor survey. Oh, I remember. Let's not wordsmith that right now because it's, you can't ask exactly the same question because, as Jeff said, the end, you can't say how do visitors feel one through five. They feel one and two and three and four and five. So, Greta, there may be there's a way I think to frame this. We can work it out, but let but the intent is for question one for us to be able to say this is how the merchants think visitors are feeling and here's what the visitor survey says visitors are feeling and mm -hmm. it'll either be very similar or or different and it'll be interesting to see that but we but okay. our purpose yeah. is to be able to compare it to that That's so let's right. just so we'll word that first question that way all right okay. Deborah, is it jeff is, is everyone okay with that i think so I think okay. yeah I, I yeah it's just that you should you have to be able to give the merchants the option of answering Correct. all all of them exactly the first oh, yeah. question. of course right and there's a way that we can do that uh, we can talk about it, but I have an idea, but there's probably several ways to do it, but it's not quite, we can't just take the same question. Greta, you're okay with that broad direction? And I think that sounds great. Okay. All right, Deborah, go ahead. New, new topic now. Yeah. Uh, there's two pieces of information that I'm wondering if we want, because there are pieces that we've talked about before that didn't end up here, which is one is that when you ask, uh, do you believe that the EDC's marketing of Woodstock has increased your business? Yes. Not sure. No. Um, not sure is like probably someone who doesn't know, but, uh, what the EDC has done. Um, but even the yeses and the nos, I'm just curious out of them, like who actually knows what the EDC market, you know, they're answering a question where I'm not sure they, they yeah. know. and so, so I like this question, but I also think it deserves a follow-up, which is. Uh, what do you think the EDC has done in marketing? So, you know, what what is your awareness or your understanding of what the EDC has done? Because I think that's otherwise it's just you know it's it's almost like rumor, you know. And, yeah, and right. the, the businesses don't know what the EDC yeah. has done unless they paid attention to our the EDC meetings and understand what we've been building and what we've done. They have no clue. So I just think that helps you with your yeses and no, giving some weight to it. You know, if somebody's like, no, but do you know what they've done? No, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I think it's, I think it's an important part of the question. So some, something, something to test for each respondent, how much, how much they know about, about the EDC so that we can say for the people, for the half of the respondents who said they, who, who, however we assess it, who know a lot, here's what they said. And then for the respondents who said they know nothing, here's what they said. However, we ask that question. So Greta, yeah. we'll have to work again. Again, I'm just I like sort of that, yeah. broad topics there. All right, hey, other other hey, comments because I want to wrap hey, this. Yeah, John. And the John. second. Oh, sorry, Deborah first, and then Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, and then the second question that we um, that we've talked about, or subject that we've talked about before, is um, the uh, website, the Woodstock website. Um, um, through the chamber, I'm just curious out of all of these people, like how many people, you know, have taken advantage of that and are on that website? Um, and because we've talked about that a number of times um, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with that or, you know, what Beth's going to do with that, but I know it's been brought up. So I think it's an important question to understand how, how the businesses are participating in that. Maybe it's as simple as, is your business on the, the Woodstock VT website? If it is, do you regularly change it? Part, never change it. Don't yeah. know how to change it. Just get some information because that's a big part of, of how people should be, I think, marketing. Anyway, yeah. That stand is up too. Just okay. so. Yeah, I know. Uh, Jeff, uh, Beth, I'm going to call on Jeff. I'll come back to you. So Jeff and then Beth. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I like what Deborah just said to get that information. But then I, I just want to comment about the uh, um, the question about um, how much the EDC's marketing has increased your business. 
I think that should be dropped. I, I think it's impossible to answer how much less than 10%, 10%, 25%, more than 25%. You're There's right. so many other factors that affect our business from year to year that the, the more important question is more basic. Do you believe EDC's marketing of Woodstock is important to the vitality of your business? And that's a question we asked the merchants just a month ago, which I sent you in, in an email today, John. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. I have um, not. And the vast majority, there was a merchants meeting, for those of you who are not aware, the vast majority of all the merchants in the village of Woodstock attended, and the great majority of them uh, signed with the name of their business, and, and they signed something saying that they support the EDC's marketing effort as important to the vitality of their business. That answers the question right there, and you've okay. got already answered. It's You didn't ask that on this survey, but it's I think that's more relevant than trying to figure out what percentage. Uh, I think that's almost impossible. I could never answer how it much. Is. Yeah, 2022 was a great year. How much of that is attributable to, to the EDC's marketing? I don't know. Do I think it helped? Yes. It, that's all I can say. There's no way for them to measure because there was no measurement component or partici right. participation by the businesses to be able to make a measurement. So I totally agree with, with Jeff there. I, the question is, is impossible for the businesses to answer. I agree. Let, all right. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's say you were, let, let's say we were doing a community survey and we said, the, 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 I don't disagree with you, Jeff, that it's a very, that it's, that the question is impossible as a practical matter for people to answer. On the other hand, unlike all of the other questions on this survey, there's, there's, I think an almost un, an almost irresistible uh, benefit to answering that question in one way, which is yes, it has an impact. If I said to Larry, Larry, we're thinking about giving, we're thinking about using all of our money to give, to give, to just give handouts to people who live on route. What, what road do you live on? Mm -hmm. Comfort Road. Yes, yes. Do you think this is a good idea? Yes, I, I, I guess I wouldn't. I, I'm. I agree with you that answer, I agree with you that the second question is not really answerable, but I don't agree that the first question is is act, is meaning. The answer to the first question is meaningful. I, it's useful. I, I don't want to say it, but I guess I don't know. I don't know how much weight to put on it because if someone said to me, "Look, you're in business. Would you like someone else's money to pay to support your business or not?" I, I would say, well, uh, is it okay? I, think, I would say, uh, yeah, I guess I would like it. John, I think you cast too big a net right there. It just, it, the question is definitely, as a business owner, it's definitely impossible to answer. I agree. It is. The question, how much did it affect you? Well, I you know agree. What? I agree it's it impossible. It's, I agree it's impossible to answer. I so with, I think the more, I th the more uh, intelligent or the most probably useful question asked is, I, are you happy with the way the marketing is being handled or being done? Well, that, and 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 can't answer that do either. Support, do you support it? You know, do you support it continuing? And you know that sort I, of stuff. I have no problem asking that question. I agree with you that that's a question that can be answered. I'm surprised that there were any merchants who said we shouldn't continue. Yeah. But 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 that's fine. I, it, let, I, I agree. Let's. I agree with. I, I I'm jumping ahead to what do we do with the answers, but. That's for another stage. I yeah. agree with you that we shouldn't answer the the impact, and that was a question that I think that I had suggested, Greta. I agree with you. It's not it's not measurable. So let's take that out and and let yeah, you, it's, could it's, ask, it's, you could ask it's, if we mm -hmm. Greta first, and then Larry, and then Patrick. Sorry. Well, well I think it's me? just Beth, it's Beth, Beth, oh, Beth, Beth. Right, Greta. Just respond to this, and then uh, you're right. Beth was next. So Greta yeah, was I have. Next. I agree. I think that the the breaking it down to percentages is impossible, and it's silly. I think that. When we workshop this survey, it was kind of like you the these three questions at the bottom here kind of went in order just to kind of think, OK, if this, then should the should any of this budget be covered by the local merchants? And it was kind of, you know, thinking about the first two questions before answering the third is kind of, I think, the right. idea. But, OK, so, uh, Beth. OK, uh, my only I want to go back to the question about are you using the website? Because my concern is that that um, 
David Brown's website might confuse the business because there are people that are paying to be on his website that are also on our joint website. And I, I hope, I'm not sure people can, not all people can differentiate. Uh, well, let's make, so Greta, let's make clear what, you know, what that is. And maybe we, maybe we even but, have a, a picture of the website on it or something. Yeah, because he, he uses Visit Woodstock and I heard that in the discussion and okay. we don't, we don't want that. Okay. Yeah, maybe you just toss the URL in there too. Yeah, right. Larry? Um, the genesis, as I recall, this whole survey was in response to some concerns about our marketing budget. Right. And whether we needed all that marketing. Good um, point. And, Excellent point. Um, so it, it feels to me that we have to be um, uh, careful. Yeah, careful with that. Maybe a, a question, and I, and I, I'm wearing a mask, so you can see that I'm not tongue in cheek. Is to say, if to the business owners, if the EDC cut its marketing budget in half, would that negatively impact your business? And if your answer is yes, ask why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, yeah. They, they, this, they can't. Patrick, Patrick, can't uh, those questions. They don't know what the program is about. The. Pro <laughs> The program has, you know, I started this thing way back when. The idea was to build a platform that would allow Woodstock to first and foremost market Woodstock and collect uh, names so that we could market to these people in a very specific way with the idea of next phases being add a business component to it where the businesses can participate in the marketing. You know, we haven't gotten to that point. And yes, it takes $100,000 a year to be able to build a program that ultimately is going to give access to everybody, uh, businesses, uh, events, uh, and, and still collect information. We were, we're in one, you know, the basically year two of a program to build out that I said at the beginning was going to take three to five years to do. Uh, and, and, you know, everyone got all panicked and everything about how much money is being spent. And, you know, that's what you do for a marketing plan. So all the questions that you're trying to ask, nobody can answer because they don't know what the program does. Right. You know, so they, you can, you're going to ask these questions. They're gonna, is the, are we spending too much money on marketing? How can they answer that question? They don't know what the results are. They don't know what the. It's, it's what you're saying, I think, is largely true, Patrick. We only have two choices. We either include, we either survey merchants or we don't. So. <laughs> I, I think you survey merchants, and I, I think the question is, you know, do you feel that, that Woodstock should market? Uh, and, you know, I, I'm not, I got to think about the question a little bit, but if you, if you guys are worried about the number, and, and that's really where the question is, that's really the problem. You know, you guys are worried about the number because you think it's too high. That's the bottom line. The EDC people think it's too high. No, and there's no, no, no. the community who think it's too high. But those that's are not that's not true, Patrick. It's about yeah. the year to year spend and what we're what we might be baked into. Well, we don't. I don't have a point of view about whether it's high or not. I, I'm trying to understand. You know. You're talking about? Yeah. I, I think I, I would argue that 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 asking the I, asking the follow. Sorry, go ahead, Mary. Well, I was just going to say I think, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think the nature of a survey is to get people's opinions, right? It's not we we aren't actually finding facts. We're getting opinions. That's what, so. I think like we're trying to get facts, maybe from something that's. For but opinions. you're getting you're getting opinions and, with and, from and, from people not knowing the information. So, you know, opinions on on things that people don't know anything but, about. But, but, but there's value to knowing their opinions, even if they're based on you know a different. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more with you, Marion. We have to deal with their opinions. Sorry, Lauren. Yeah, go I, on. I think most people will answer most of these questions. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Lance. I won't answer because I don't know. So yeah, okay. I'm not right. going to say that what percentage of right. marketing budget should be. But you could do merchants. a one to five. Because I also think that merchants think that the, the money coming to the EDC is being paid by the merchants right. through the rent that they're paying, so they're already paying for it. Right. Which is, by the way, just so you know, I want to make sure that the merchants yeah. know that that's completely incorrect. That's, that's, incorrect. that's totally incorrect. Yeah, okay. That's to, to everyone's point, just quickly, we should keep in mind, this isn't a town meeting day vote on the record. And we have, you know, direction by 
you know, law and where we need to go. It's an informative survey to help us understand what people, what their, what their um, perception is of what we're doing, what their perceived reality is versus the reality that we think we're actually creating. And that's where your data goes in, Patrick. Like we know numbers soup to nuts, like what, what we're actually getting, the clicks, the engagement, and all the great data that you're building for us in the platform, which I'm in favor of. And I voted for numerous times these increases, but and continued support. But I think that if people don't understand what we're doing, even if it's good for them, then it's not going to be helpful for the community at the end of the day. So let me suggest the following, because I want to, I want to, because again, we, we clearly, I think, you know, need to allow some more time, particularly on this survey to, to, to get this kind of feedback and Greta for you to cons consolidate the ideas and think about wordsmithing and so forth. Let me just suggest that I think the general direction is, which, which we, which I think everyone can agree on is, there are a set of questions here that let's not answer questions that no one or almost no one can answer, right? And and that doesn't violate your point that it's worthwhile to get. That. Let let's ask questions where we're interested in their opinion. Some of those some of those questions include your activity on the website, um, whether you think whether you think if if how much you know about what the EDC is doing, whether you think the EDC's marketing is helping or not. Um, uh, and you know, maybe some further about how how much how much you know, or or, or uh, how, basically how much you know about it. Just getting into a little like, do you really know or not? Whatever. But but and just a general question about you know, do you think that the, the question that Jeff that you asked people to sign their name up to, do you support continued use of you know, do you support the EDC's marketing program? What would you do? What would you do differently about the EDC's marketing program? I think would be a good question to add into that. Those are all opinions that we'll get. We can decide what to do with those answers. Um, you know, I think they will inform us in some way, not perhaps factually, but in other ways. And and we avoid questions that people can't answer. And right, and John. John, that should include that last question about what percentage of the budget. I mean, that's not the last question. I mean, uh, what percentage of the budget for marketing should be covered by the local merchants? I don't think you can ask that question either. Uh, for one thing, people don't even know what the budget is to answer the question. What percentage means? Um, I, the way to answer that question, the way I would change that question, because I think it's a good question, is I would say, would you be willing to part? You know to participate uh, in the, the program and at what percentage level? Because one of the, one of the things we can do is we, we can make this somewhat self-funding itself by having the merchants kick in a little bit of money. They'll pay much more attention to what the marketing program is uh, and they'll be able to actually be part of the marketing program. Yeah. Or you if could... you, yeah, if, yeah, but not if you say, you, you can ask that question, that's right. a good question, but not if you say, Ask them what percentage. Right, I agree. Ask, yeah, they, just they ask them if they would. If are they you would likely, participate. not likely, more likely? Yes, something to sort of gauge. Interest. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. yes. Right. Would you be willing? Yes. Would you be willing to contribute to an increase in the marketing budget? Or something yes. Like yeah. that? yes, yes, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a great, great. Because that pivot. sort of says if they, you know, that in order to say yes to that, they have. They're obviously saying they believe that the marketing is helpful. Right. I mean, it, it, it's sort of and by the way, the, and, and I think asking that question from a, in terms of defending our spending to the community. The, um, one member of the community has already asked a question, which if we cannot answer, I believe we we will have a real difficulty spending on marketing, which is that if this marketing is so effective, why won't the merchants pay for any of it? And there is no good answer to that question. And well, so if we there's no answer because we haven't talked to them about it. Whatever the, whatever the reason, I'm I'm not saying we can't whatever the reason I'm not going to answer that. I have only one response today, which is if the answer comes back zero, I have no response to that question. So I agree. I agree. And, and so I think I think that asking the question the, the way we did, not with the percentages and so forth, which is unanswerable, but would you be willing to contribute to a fund to expand the EDC's marketing program or something? No, of that? maybe like yeah, right. very no, likely. Like that. Sorry, Joe, last comment and then we'll move. Yeah, I, I could probably anticipate some of the answers of what there'll be. I, 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 I would bet heavily that most of the food and beverage merchants town would say no we're already paying 
I understand I would. Uh, How are you paying? You're not paying. How are you paying? It's, uh, this is this is this is great. I, because I, but, 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 it's money that's calm down, uh, calm down, Patrick. Calm that's down. what they will say. I Sorry, think more guys, than it's, 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 calm, down. calm guys, down, calm down, calm down. We have we have to take one percent of what uh, uh, everything we sell. I said it. You collect one percent. You don't yeah, take it out. And nobody you else does. Man. Nobody else does. I do. Well, I mean, Jeff doesn't. Right. No, no, guys, guys, this is not what we're debating. It's money Jeff, in your pocket. It's money Patrick, in your pocket. Patrick, hold on one second. Down, what Jeff Patrick. is saying is what people will answer. Lauren has made the point. That people... So they're going to say, listen, we already collect 1% right. and we give it to the state. Right. Which is, they, we're already doing that. Why should we contribute all, more? All, okay, all I'm arguing for is that we include the question, would you be willing to contribute? Yeah. We I mean, that, that, that's, that's, that's the way we should do it. We can move on. Right. Okay. It's okay. very yeah. straightforward. So, and then the question. when we get... Tell me what to anticipate. I, I happen to agree with you as to what the answer will be, yeah. anticipating that when we get to the community yeah. with that survey information, yeah. it is going to be much, much, yeah. much more difficult yeah. for us to defend a, a marketing budget without, <laughs> without that component. Because... But that's a prediction of what's going to happen. It, it will either happen or not. So, I, Lauren, okay, you get the last word. I, I would suggest putting a line in that states how the funding happens now so that people know that and don't I, I, – if, if it can be done in one sentence. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's – I know it's complex, but – it's not yeah. a bad thought. I, the, the one yeah. of the struggles we have to understand is that the one percent doesn't just cover marketing; it covers all of the stuff we do. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's what makes it complicated. I, yeah, it's a good idea. Let, you know, you know, you know, you got you know, just a quick thought on this. You know, people like in Queechy, my parents like back in the day, they bonded together to like buy massive amounts of fuel oil to get a discount, and like schools in Connecticut. Uh, districts that aren't even related get together to get better deals on books. So maybe there's a way to frame it in terms of like, you know, what this is. And if the, if the, if the, if the merchants are interested in, you know, getting more bang for their buck, if they're interested at all in any marketing whatsoever, would they like to be part of a marketing cartel, so to speak of a bigger buy? Like maybe it's just about the presentation of it um, that we have to put more thought into, you know, we, we, we have, we have a lot of yeah. There's a lot of dimensions. Deborah, is it? Is yeah, I do. I, I sure. it has to. This may help. I feel like maybe, and this is the the point is that this is about perception because I think most people don't understand what is happening, and I think maybe to frame it that way at the beginning is we want to have an understanding of what you want and what your understanding is of what we're doing, and it's the first question is you know, uh, what is your awareness of what EDC is doing in marketing? Have that be number one so that we understand how people are answering all these questions. Well, you know? well let, let's ask the merchants. We can ask the merchants. Yeah. Who, who do you think pays for, you know, who do you think pays for the, pays the 1% option tax? You know, you pay, your customers pay. Um, I don't know. I think no, also, I mean, you know, having, having, because that's what we're trying to understand also is, the perception it's uh, yeah. everything here is about the perception right. so greta <laughs> one of the challenges here greta is 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 working with well is beth is still on i think jeff are you still on yeah i am and i i'd like to add something to this well, just right. for every, everyone's knowledge as you know the the merchants gathered and they signed what i described to you in support of the edc marketing but in addition we have developed a survey that has gone out to the merchants, and most of which are coming, have been coming back now. And one of the questions on it would be, would you contribute to marketing Woodstock in the fourth quarter? And in the and then it lists following ways, different ways, uh, you know, social media, uh, uh, you know, public radio, uh, pr certain print things. The, 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 we are interested in finding out who would do that in a, in a way that the EDC is not attempting to market whatsoever, which right. is really for the Upper Valley and just for holiday time, um, and to see if they would contribute towards that. And so it would be interesting to see. Those answers are already uh, – Beth has a lot of them already. I haven't seen a tally yet. But um, we are looking at merchant support for marketing in a different way than the EDC is marketing. 
Very interesting. The reason I asked if you're still on is Greta, are you comfortable? I think that that because merchants have are, are and have been very involved in the EDC's discussions about this, and they are one of the three constituencies, and we have them right here, and you've been working and incorporated into that little working group. Do you feel comfortable over the next week taking this general input and meeting again? And Beth and Jeff, would you be willing to be representatives and the three of you have one more meeting over the next week and try to Absolute, come Absolutely. With, with, with Lauren Fisher as well. Okay, great. So, so Lauren, sorry, I didn't mean to exclude you. So if the four of you would, would have a meeting within a week and come back with version two, and I'll give you the platform, we'll figure out how the EDC is going to meet again and so forth. And I think most of our discussion will then be on this survey because I think the other two surveys were generally aligned on what needs to be done. So we'll schedule another meeting in about 10 days or two weeks. We'll, we'll give us another, we're not in a rush, we have time. Uh, so is everyone comfortable with that as a follow-up? And then the other surveys, we'll edit them, get them back out to people. And then at that same meeting, we'll do any, you know, and if people can give feedback to Marion and I and Greta via email. And then when we get to, um, when we get to uh, the meeting, say two weeks or two and a half weeks from now, we'll, we'll finalize the three surveys and then we'll be immediately ready to get them out. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. I think we're, you know, yes. we're cold. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I will say that by the way, even though we're kind of debating a lot about this, I think there's actually a pretty clear consensus on how to do this survey. We just have to construct it according to the principles we've all just discussed. So I don't think we have any fundamental disagreement. We may have disagreements at the end <laughs> with the results, but, but not about what the survey should be. Okay. Thank you all very much for that. Um, Good progress, and I think the surveys, all three of them, have been strengthened as a result of these of these conversations. And they'll we'll have one more round of revisions. Okay, the remaining items, the grant follow up process. Deb, do you want to comment um, at all on on this? I mean, I don't think we need to explain the automation and so forth. We've agreed on the questions. What would you? What if anything would? I thought we I thought we had not agreed on the on the questions, which is why I put it on the agenda. So am I mistake? Oh, I thought we had agreed on the yes. question. Uh, you're right. I, I made a mistake. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so. yeah I just, I, I think it's just an update, like it's about to go out and we'll start having information and that we are going back to the year before as well, because there are a number of grants that, you know, we might want to get some information on as well, for some of the larger grants. Yeah. And so this process is now, it's almost fully, auto, it's almost ready to be automated. It's built into Grant Manager. So people where they get their funding will also sign up for follow-up meetings and they'll, the information will be appear on the website. It'll, it's all, the flow will all be automated. Um, so. Um, um, this may be the place where I, I put in the point about our logo. Uh, let's you need to wait till D. To, till D, just hold on. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. A any other comments about the grant follow-up process? Remember this is where some people come in every three months, some every six months and so forth. And then in some cases, like the grant writer, we're going to do it post. post so is the grant writer going to come on board again? Is that where we're at right now? No, no, no. We're not going to discuss that today. Okay. We're just talking about, we're first thing, we're going to do a review of, of prior grants. Okay. We're going to oh, ask. Right. 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 I'm sorry. You're That's right. okay. Can, can we ask uh, what they've done to publicize the largesse of the I, I think that's one of the questions, is it, Deborah? Or we, we can, we have, the yeah. they're, they're going to yeah, come and appear. Is that one of the questions? It is, that is one of the questions, and I, I'll update that on D. <laughs> okay. That but we like also have the ability to ask them anything we want. There's a there's a set of questions that they pre-fill out. Mm -hmm. We get those, and then they come to the meeting. We have the benefit of their written update mm -hmm. brief, and we can ask them whatever we want. But we could also ask very specific questions to the, spe the a specific grant, you know, in the form as well. So, you know, I will make sure that they're customized as well. Okay. The select board, so last at the last meeting, we approved changes to the rental incentive, housing rental incentive program. One of the changes two of the changes were not controversial, allowing for six month rentals and incenting the number of workers rather than the number of bedrooms. Rather than the number of what? Bedrooms. Okay. So in other words, if you have a three bedroom, if you have a three bedroom apartment with one worker in it, okay. you used to get more money than a 
one bedroom apartment with three workers in it. <laughs> if you can do that. <laughs> now, now, now you get more money for work. You get money for workers, not well, so much for bedroom. With six right. uh, those were those were approved by the select board. The third change, which was also approved by the select board, was to expand to allow incentives for homeowner for for landlords whose properties were in adjoining towns but not in Woodstock as long as they were renting to a Woodstock worker. worker. Very analogous, the same concerns were raised by the select board as when we proposed to give a grant to a childcare facility outside of Woodstock. And the, EDC, the, the select board at that time voted to approve that. Uh, we checked to make sure that it was legal, it is. Um, and they voted to approve that with one select board member voting against that. That same issue came up. And this time, I think it, it got more complicated because, um, well, it doesn't, it, 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 I'm having trouble remembering exactly what caused it, but there was some, we gave them some misinformation. We, we made a mistake. Jill made a mistake in, in explaining to them how the program worked. And we then corrected the mistake. And in that correction, it exacerbated the concern of some select board members. It had something to do with um, uh, housing already being provided and whether they would get that. Right, correct. Yeah, existing, the, existing, uh, existing landlords right. um, renting to it. Yeah. Right. And so, so, so the issue, the at the at the select board meeting. I mean, these are sort of interesting, conceptual or philosophical questions. At the select board meeting, at which they approved all of the recommended updates to the program, we told them that landlords who currently have are currently renting to workers and have been, let's say, for a long time, or just are currently, are eligible for the incentive. That was not correct. And it's only people who are adding to the capacity. That, when we corrected that, it caused a greater concern about giving money to non, to land, to home, to landlords that were not based in Woodstock. Why isn't, isn't important, it just, it, it did. You know, people just felt that if in fact we're not going to give it to Woodstock existing landlords, but we would give it to a, a new Bridgewater landlord, maybe that was too much to explain. Whatever the reason, it, it caused them to, to, to raise a season. concern. Well, and, and, and so two things happened at the meeting. It was, by the way, it was a really good discussion. And, and I think, you know, respect for the EDC's decision-making process and a desire to hear what we wanted to do, but also a desire to address their concerns. What we ended up with, which Jill, I think Jill proposed, or maybe I think Jill proposed it, and everyone agreed to this, is we would put on hold the third change, which is we are now not going to grant, for the moment, we're not going to grant uh, non-Woodstock homeowners um, any incentives, which means that the one person in the pipeline not from Woodstock will not get the grant now. They, they, it's possible that they would reapprove that concept later but they're not going to do it now. And, and secondly, that the EDC will think through whether or not creating, an, creating a new incentive for existing landlords is what are the pros and cons of doing this. And at the meeting, we explained what we were concerned about about doing this, which I think explained is about, doing about giving incentives to existing landlords, which, which was basically what we said was, if we do that, that will be fairer but we will not expand workforce housing capacity. We will get no more housing for, we were trying to solve a problem. That won't solve a problem. <laughs> it will just give money to landlords who are giving housing, which is fair. But, I, you know, so yeah. my personal opinion is I would- I, 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 I John, I, I like my analogy with it. It's when Elon cuts the Tesla price by 10 grand. It's as if he suddenly had to write a check to everyone who ever bought a Tesla for 10 thousand bucks it's just it's just not how the world works however however if i was a select board member i i know i mean i i have no I, it's very difficult to answer the the person who wrote me an email the next day and said i understand that there's when 
before we corrected the misinformation, who wrote the email and said, I understand that there's an incentive, you know, so and so if I have four units, I'm renting them all to four Woodside employees. How do I how do I get my, you know, incentive? And I wrote back and I said, I think that's a mistake. We're investigating it. And you know, he said, Well, what do you mean? You mean you mean someone new gets it and I don't? And I said, well, yes, that's ah. So I understand the pressure that the select board. Anyway, the, the the resolution was to put on hold the and therefore not approve yet, maybe never, the proposal to for outside the community, and to investigate the pros and cons to come back with information about that. What are the pros? What are the cons? What would the costs be? How many are there, et cetera? And so the housing working group is now working on that information, and we'll come back. And it's a very reasonable way to in the short term to resolve the issue. And, you know, then we'll have a debate about it uh, over I, the next three or four months. I wasn't at the meeting, so, but I have to ask this question. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if anybody has the same question is, what was, what was the logic behind allowing um, us to help pay for a childcare facility in Bridgewater and, and not and, do this. And not do this. Well, one what of the select board was... members said, well, I didn't vote for that either. Okay, one did. But what about the other? I mean, it took, my understanding, yeah. three, three select board yeah. changed their mind. It, it, was, it, was, it was a complicated meeting. And I think that what happened was that through the, the, the civil discussions that we realized that we can get two wins and punt a third for more investigation. And I think that's sort of, where everyone felt most comfortable going. I don't think it was fully debated at the end of the day because we decided that we could yeah, go back and examine it. No, there, there, there was there was no there was that we didn't fully debate that point. That point wasn't fully right. debated. Mm -hmm. Jill be. brought it. Jill brought that point up, Joe, and um and one of the select board members mentioned what John just said. Well, I didn't uh, vote for that either. either so. there's, there's, there's five people on the board. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that, that, that it that, wasn't debated at yeah, the time. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's that was that's the update. Okay. Um, Deborah has raised an additional issue. Deborah, do you want to the issue about yeah. uh, um, attribution? If you, sure. If you look on the page that we're looking at the agenda right now, and you yeah. see on the bottom, you see Woodstock EDC. Um, it's something that we worked on with Patrick. Patrick worked on, and we talked with. Um, uh, Jill is a part of that too, and myself and John. There's also a version, I believe, where the W is on top, so it could be in a square version as well, where it clearly says the Woodstock EDC. Um, when I was at the um, Rotary meeting um, on Wednesday, there was a really wonderful presentation about Bookstock, and there was a um, um, one slide about the sponsorships and they had to the top sponsors and three logos across it. And then underneath they had smaller um, sponsors all written out. The logo that they had for the EDC just was the Woodstock logo, which is literally just the Woodstock with the W and the star above it. And so, um, and the woman who was presenting said, oh, that you know, we got a grant from the Woodstock EDC. However, on their material, it's just the Woodstock logo. So um, I'm guessing that all of our sponsorships, and, and again, now that we have this grant follow-up and, and you know, we can make sure that this is part of the process to make sure that they have the right logo um, uh, for the EDC on it. And I don't know if it's too late for Bookstock, if they've already done their printing or whatever, but there's no mention of Woodstock EDC um, besides that logo and that logo only says Woodstock. So yeah. I just wanna make sure that if people are involved that they get to, you yeah. know, the grantees. This, this is a great, it's Patrick, you're muted. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Patrick, and then I'll comment. Two things we can do. One is we can create a page on the website that has the correct logos to use. Uh, that would be very easy, John. I can send those to you and you can put them up yeah. for people to download. Uh, the second thing is we can get to the to the Bookstock people and at least give them the right logo to yes. use on any material that's digital that they're not printing. Amen. That, that was my next thought. Yeah. Uh, so if it has to be printed. Yeah, Patrick, if, if we have very little leverage over you, but since you have pride in the logo, could you, I, I will, if you send it to me, I will post it on the website. Could you get in touch with the Bookstock? 
Bookstock folks and do what you just suggested. Yeah, I've been, I've been talking with Peter because we, we're donating rooms. Uh, okay, great. Donating. Uh, we're, 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 we're cutting our prices for rooms for them. So I can talk to Peter, no problem. All right, thank you. The, I will say that that in, in the positive, this is a great catch, Deborah. And I think as we get more capable at following up and enforcing this recognition point, we'll this is a good thing to add to it. I bet there will be more. But I will just say in Bookstock's defense, that they did submit a marketing plan that I reviewed. I mean, it, I didn't want to like involve a lot of people. It's just much better than it's ever been. And as one example of that, what they offered us was it, Joe, the EDC, in this case, Joe, is going to introduce, is going to be the person who introduces the first, the keynote event on the first night of Bookstock with um, what's the guy from the New Yorker um, and Borowitz and, yeah. Borowitz and interviewed by um, uh, Workley, but what's the guy in NPR, uh, Mitch Wortley. Yeah. Uh, and, and introducing Mitch and Andy. By uh, the way, I have Joe. no idea. Who I know. <laughs> I, oh my God. <laughs> it's like they're going to be, gonna be old friends. But anyway, they offered us, awesome. they offered us the opportunity to, basically be the you know introduce the keynote event as as a, as the major sponsor so there i think i think this is just it. hopefully when you talk to them it's just a misunderstanding they yeah. don't have it in time or whatever so yeah no i just, i don't think it's the, yeah. they meant to do the right thing they just didn't have the right material right. you know so and yeah. it's much better than last year so you know it's in the right direction the reality is we haven't really had a very very recently so yeah so, yes i'd like to see you in it okay all right. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to encourage us to only have one working group update, which is because we've talked a little bit about housing. We've talked a lot about things that affect marketing. Um, unless, Todd, do you have anything urgent? Just briefly. You super, super quick, right. super quick. You do Two things. 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 And I don't I don't want to I don't want to be in a program. Like this. I'm just I don't know the right way to do it. So the thing I'm saying is. Chakra Working Group Governor will be reaching out to everybody to see if they can come next month to give us an update on um, where they're at individually as a group with a, a representative from each group. But with that said, the calendar, um, what I would like to, I'm sure I'm doing it the wrong form and wrong way, so you can just do it however the proper way is. But with, with July 4th being the week and the 6th being the first day, is there any way we can push the meeting into the next week because a lot of people will be on vacation that that week. And so I feel like it'll be really hard for me to rally the troops, so to speak. But I'd be happy to try. And I won't personally be on vacation. But um, but if there's a way we can talk about maybe massaging that day, that would be wonderful. Uh, does anyone object to if we try to move it to the 13th and I can check it with everyone's availability? Um, I agree with that idea. I also object. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Just teasing. Oh, all right. I'm not going to be. So, well, actually, not, actually, we I don't know that we need to do further work. Is there any, if no one objects, we will decide now to move it to the 13th. That also, I think, helps if we have an interim meeting, even if it's just a half an hour to talk about the surveys, we space it out a little bit better. That's good. Do we, do we, right. That's so awesome. Uh, no, July 3rd, from July 6th is a Thursday. Is that right? Yeah, because Tuesday is the 4th. July 5th, my yeah, the 13th, July 13th would be the proposed new oh. uh, meeting oh, date. I want to know. All right, so July 13th, and so so Todd, why don't you invite the folks for the 13th then? Great, roger that. Okay, and we have a quick update from, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, yeah, we have an update from the Downtown Revitalization Group. Um, Let's do it next time. Yeah, you know what, we might, we might, if we if we do, the problem is I have, pers I have a personal conflict that I'm trying to get to. Tonight. And I don't want to shortcut this discussion. Can I just let me just talk for two minutes about this to get your head ready, and then let's at the next meeting when we talk about the survey, let's also talk about this, and then we'll make a decision. Well, let me do this. Yeah, let, fine. Go ahead. Yeah. This, this all stems from the annual debate that goes on about things that need to be done at downtown to make downtown look better and feel better for residents or uh, visitors who come in. And so, rather than have this constant annual debate about Who's going to pay for what? And what's going to be done? Anything else? John and I and, and Beth have identified some of the the, uh, the things that are required almost on an annual basis, and we we identified a few extra ones. And the idea is, the town or the village should actually pay for this because it's 
more or less their responsibility. And we had a meeting Tuesday morning at the cafe and Eric Duffy, the town manager was there, John, uh, Stuart Matthews, Beth. Uh, and um, what we talked about very quickly, we thought about, okay, let's find out what this thing's cost, get these things done, the EDC will supplement the village or the town, whoever's paying for this, for the next two or three years until they can get it implemented and put it into their permanent annual budget. And give an example of what some of the things are. Oh, for goodness sakes. We're talking about watering the plants um, every year, um, maintaining the benches and the uh, the picnic tables, in other words, sanding them down, urethanium annually, um, uh, disinfecting, cleaning the trash can. The top of the trash cans get just mess. They're terrible, they're awful, disgusting. So uh, get them cleaned up once or twice a week. Just somebody go down there with a, with a spray and a rag and make them on the outside and the inside. Those are Teagle's Landing, that's always an issue. And I don't understand why it belongs to the village, it belongs to the town, just like Tribal Park, just like uh, the, the Green. That shouldn't be an issue, but it seems to be every year. So this year uh, we had somebody, well, Cyber and Water go down there with his crew, clean it up, make it look good in time for Memorial Day. And, but uh, we want it to be identified as something that is crucial and what needs to be done every year along with these other things. So we're putting together a budget. Hopefully, we'll get it approved by the commission. That and, it should, and I spoke with Eric after the meeting. He said it's not a lot of money. We should be able to implement it or integrate it into our budget, annual budget. You know, once we get things straightened out. Um, and so uh, I think we're talking about anywhere from eight to ten thousand dollars initially, and then and that would include buying some umbrellas that have been you know broken and missing mishandled and destroyed, uh, adding possibly a trash can that we need that we didn't buy last time, putting in a strategic place. And we also talked about storage, but that's a different subject. Essentially, putting together a budget so this stuff can be annual, hire, either hiring a person or supplementing the village budget so somebody from the DPW can do it every year. But, right, with, with the objective, the one, the key is, is that the, the giving the ta the village time a second chance. Yeah. They said they would do this the first time and yeah. they didn't. Remember, yeah. if you all remember, they said someone said, who's going to pay for the maintenance of Teagle's Landing? The We said the village is going to pay for it. The village said we don't have it in our budget. It's yeah. the middle of the budget year. Yeah. So we said, okay, we'll pay for it for one year. And then you guys take it over from there. And then they didn't. They didn't do it. So in, in a sort of, what I would describe as a spirit of generosity, but also determination, <laughs> Rather than do this penny by penny, we're going to say, look, we're going to give you two or three three years, and that's for us to discuss, and Joe will put a yeah. board of proposal. I will. But, we, but we've got the town manager on board now. This is yeah. the town's responsibility. His people have to do it. Yeah. And we'll pay for the cost of that for a couple of years. Until they get, into, until their they get it into their budget. And then they take it over, and we don't have to deal with this. That's what, that's, I just, the reason why we wanted to bring this up tonight is not to debate it. We'll have another chance to debate it yeah, sure. and a final proposal to come forward yeah. that Eric is going to put forward. Right. It's going to be his proposal. Yeah. But Great we idea. Want, we just wanted you guys to get it in your mind so it doesn't come up in one meeting that it's a surprise we're thinking about this. Right. If you agree or disagree, tell Joe over the next month yeah. as you put this together. And see how far you get with that. Yeah, right. so, and, uh, I agree, and, but where, where's, it, my, it, where's my placard on my bench, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the thing you should understand is what we've done so far is we've already cleaned up Teagle's Landing. It looks great. Uh, Roger, who does the annual um, watering the plants, he's on board now. He's going to start doing uh, the cleanup of the park benches. He's already cleaned up all the uh, trash cans. They look great now. So it's already in the process. We just got to get a find out to a number, and uh, Eric will make the proposal, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Yes. Great. Um, awesome. I just wanted to say one uh, thanks to Roger, who did. Um, he thought this was wonderful. He he is willing to 
um, like palm sand and um, heavily urethane, these picnic tables, because uh, um, they get a lot of use and they get filthy. And so uh, the urethane will really protect them. And they were made by Charlie Shackleton. They're, yeah. you know, they're not I your um, Home care. Depot picnic tables. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say was what I just lost my train of thought. Say good night. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, Say good night, Beth. Nah, stop it. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Beth made a motion to adjourn, but she realized she couldn't. Right. Well, I just want to I just want to finish. I, what I'm I'm sensitive to is that there's work that gets done off outside of the meetings in the working groups, and then we bring it up, and you guys have no no time to kind of advance, think about it. That's what talking about all this other stuff in the meetings. Yeah, yeah, no, but I think child care and everything else, right. which is so important. And so downtown revitalization is also important. So we'll have one or two more discussions about this, leading to. I think two meeting, one meeting from now or two meetings from now, Eric Duffy stands up as the town manager, makes a proposal to the EDC. Okay, well, it's just already been done. Can we can we put like yeah. 15 minutes on the agenda for the next special meeting? I mean, we're gonna be there yeah. for yes. 25 that's, minutes anyway. That's what I'm suggesting is that we have we 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 give start to give feedback on this issue to Joe at the at that special meeting. Oh, great. Okay. Great. Can I just can, I did have my train of thought came back. All right. Um when I was going by the Welcome Center tonight after setting up for the pasta supper, Kate Miller was out there in her um, painting attire, spray painting the plastic barrel that is one of the trash cans that we're still using that was partially blue and green. And um, so the trash cans are really something that are expensive, but but need to be. Beth. Beth, okay. you're you're bringing us back to trash cans. Beth, you're scaring me. I know. I, I <laughs> hey, you're talking to me. We can be talking. Hey, you to you next. Hey, guys, guys. <laughs> All right. Can we, I think we, we've reached the end of our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. Joe wait, is moved. Wait, is there a... wait, wait, John, can you do one second? I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I know I'm going to oh. my last meeting because uh, I will be moving to Menden. Uh, and anybody wants to know details, call me. Uh, I can tell you what's going on. Uh, but we basically sold the motel and we should be closing somewhere around June 15th. Uh, we'll be moving to a condo in Mending t Menden temporarily. So this is my last meeting. You guys are awesome. This is one of the best groups I've ever been part of. Uh, it's, thank you. Uh, it's been an honor to be on the EBC board. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, Wish you all the best Patrick, luck. Man. Patrick, my apologies for overlooking that you were here and I just actually forgot that you were leaving. And so I didn't do the normal yeah. thank you and so forth. And actually our policy has been to our practice, I should say, has been to offer our thanks to people when they're not at the meeting because they never show up for that last meeting when when they're supposed yeah. to. And you are showing up, so um, yeah. Let me. I, yes, I. I'm sure yeah. I speak to everybody. You have made an incredible, an incredible Thank contribution, you. and the way that you have with Beth transformed the marketing working group is uh, a you know is a oh. is a contribution that is going to last. Whatever happens, whatever the outcome of these things are. We're going to keep doing marketing in some form, and we're going to benefit hugely from what you have, you and the team have put together. So, thank you for that. And hopefully, you're awesome, Patrick. Marketing group a little bit too. To, I'm not going to just disappear. Although right. it's crazy right now, but uh, and I'm going to see if I can find somebody uh, to to head that up with Beth. Uh, yeah. Jennifer uh, from the end is incapable of doing it. There, her time is just too too uh, tight. Yeah. yeah, she she's actually she told me that she'd be willing to do it in the future, but I think for a year or two, um, it, yeah. it's probably not. She just doesn't have she's the time. at the end right now for her to to do it. Yeah. So. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? Second. A second. Patrick, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody, so Thanks, much. Everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Nikki. Oh, Rogers.